Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure, and we're about ready to start round five of the Bank Box Battle Series for Nickels. So I've got three boxes of nickels here, $300 in nickels to search, 150 roll hunt ahead of us. And if you haven't been watching the Battle of the Banks series, I have both pennies and nickels. You can check out the nickel link up above to get yourself familiar with how we do it and where we're at. For those that have watched it, you'll recall Wells Fargo won the first three rounds with Chase taking the last round with a very nice box. Now, at the end of the day, just like in pennies, B of A is struggling for me. Starting to wonder if B of A boxes are being overly hunted in my area and maybe that's why they're starting to struggle or is there something else going on that I don't know about? To any extent, Wells Fargo's in the lead, comfortably at 44.9 a box, 37.3 for Chase, and B of A's in last at 30 points. So, figured I would go ahead and start it in the order of first to worst. Wells Fargo first, Chase second, B of A last, and we'll see if Wells Fargo can continue the dominance, if Chase can have back-to-back -back big boxes, or will B of A finally make a showing and step up and produce a solid hunt. That being said, I've already pre-opened all the boxes to make sure that we have circulated nickels. There are circulated nickels in all the boxes. I didn't see any enders on the top side of this box or on the few rolls that looked at one end on those. I just validated that they were in fact circulated nickels. All right, I'll move the score sheet out of the way. I got my nickel hunting mat ready to go. We're gonna kick it off with Wells Fargo. Roll number one, first find. It was slipped on its reverse. I had a feeling it was old, but I wanted to validate. It is, it's a 1949 Denver. And as you know, since it's a 49 Denver, we do need to check for the D over S over mint mark, which is listed on my net. So I'll get my microscope set up here in a second. We'll check it and I'll bring it back in to show you what I'm looking at. So I've got it under a microscope and taking a close look at it, I don't see the markings of a D over S. But if I find anything, I'll bring it back in. If not, we'll see you on the next open roll. I wasn't kidding when I said the next open roll. I literally opened roll two, was hunting them, and I started to slide them down, and look what I caught an eyesight of. I see a buffalo, and it looks like it's a 30-something. 1930. 1930, no mint mark, but... That's a dated Buffalo nickel, 1930 to boot. Not a key date or a semi-key date, but still. We'll take a 30s Buffalo nickel in the box. Roll number two, hopefully it's a good sign of things to come. Two finds, two rolls early on. Roll number five is gonna yield a 1946 ender, I believe. I won't bring you back in unless there's something else in this roll. You see it, nothing special about a 46. Unless it's a silver planchet by mistake. We're on roll 22. Box had gotten quiet for a little bit. Just the last roll and I was gonna film, but I thought, eh. It's a 1955 semi-key date Jefferson nickel in not that bad a shape. The strike's not the greatest, but doesn't have a lot of dings and damage. Either way, less than eight million of those minted. So we'll take a semi-key Jefferson nickel. But I bring in because very next roll, 22, got a 1940 Philadelphia. Rule 25, I just grabbed it out, figured I'd check the bottom, and boom, a Buffalo Nickel Ender right out of the box. You can't get mad at that. I'll tell you, I'm a little bit disappointed, though. It does have the ring of death being an Ender. So I don't know if I'll get a date. I might, but let's see what it is. Buffalo Nickel Ender. I don't know if I'll get a date. There's no mint mark either, so it's Philadelphia. Let me see if I can look at it under my scope and at, with my loop and see if I see anything. Uh, there's some raised elements there. I might be able to get one, but uh, I'll bring it back in if I can see something on this guy. So I've got my macro lens on. I'm pretty close to it, but you can see it's a 1.9. That's a 2, and the last one's a 6. I don't know how well that's going to come out for you guys, but... No nick -a date needed. It's a 1926 Buffalo nickel out of Philadelphia. So we've got two Buffaloes in the box, a 1930 Philly and a 1926 Philly. That's a good score. Maybe there's even more. 
Roll number 34. We're going to get another 40s nickel here, and I believe it is a 1940. It is another Philadelphia minted 1940s nickel. Hunting roll number 36, and I've just uncovered a Canadian nickel here, and this one is 1988. Roll number 50. Going to get at least one more find, a 1947 out of Denver. So we finished hunting that box of Wells Fargo nickels, and it wasn't that bad. It was actually pretty good, mostly because of the buffaloes. But we did score six nickels in the 50s, and one of them was a pretty good shape, 1955 Philadelphia minted semi-key date one. Can't get mad at that. We got five nickels in the 40s, two from the 40s, but no war nickels in there, unfortunately. No nickels in the 30s that were Jefferson's, but we did find a 26 and a 1930 Philadelphia mint buffalo nickel. Two of them in the box. Can't get mad at that. Also pulled out three 2009s and a Canadian. On top of that, I just thought that 64 and 66 were pretty nicely struck nickels, so I'll be putting those in the tubes. I only keep 60s nickels that are in really great shape, like those, and I make full rolls of them. Wells Fargo's done. I'll get that in the stat sheet. And next, we'll move on to Chase. We're on roll number five. We're gonna get our first find of the box. I think I saw a four in here, yeah. Might be a Bahamian coin. Commonwealth of the Bahamas, 1998, with the pineapple. Well, I'll be, guys. Roll number seven. Just pulled it out of the box. Push the rabbit back because it looked odd. And take a look at this. That's a 1945 war nickel, 35% silver on the end. Holy cow. I'll take it. Let's see what the mint is. Like I said, it's pretty slick, but it's a 1945S and it's comprised of 35% silver and we'll add it to my collection. Roll 13 is going to give us our first 40s non-silver nickel and it is a 1940. And you know what? That 1940 is in really good shape and judging by the coloring of it, I think it was in an album for a while. Pretty nice looking, for sure. I'll add it to the collection and keep looking for more. Roll 22, got a 1940 on the button out of Philly. So I'm on rule 23 and I'm a little bit at a loss here. Yes, the nickels are dirty, but this is the 1983D and it's in pretty good shape. So I always take a look at the 83 and 82 nickels because they're worth a little more when they're in better shape and the back caught my eye because it looks kind of shiny and I thought well it's not a proof let me just take a look at it under the scope it just looks a little funny and I'm going to show you guys this nickel because this is crazy so you can see it's a terrible strike it looks like it's been double struck a little bit but it could also just be some dye deterioration doubling but I'll keep going because it gets crazier you can see what looks like a double strike there or some extra metal look at the R you've got something going on here something going on here looks like there's two strikes there's a little bit of a dimple effect on a lot of the letters again could just be damage but there's extra metal down over here we're gonna keep going um, same thing on all the letters on E pluribus unum if I keep going Looks like it's double serifed here. Looks like it's a double strike, but I'm going to keep going as well. We go to Unum, same thing. You can clearly see it appears that there's part of the U. It's at a little bit of an angle. We're going to keep going. This N has something going on in here. Could just be damage. Same thing with this U again. It looks like it's a little bit off-centered here. Looks like, it's, looks like that one might be either rotated clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on which strike you're looking at. Again, the middle of the M looks odd. Now let's go to the bottom. That A looks like it's been pounded two or three times. Same thing with the C. We're going to keep on going because it gets a little crazier. Looks like heavy machine doubling for the most part, but then it gets really weird. 
This O is elongated on both sides, and it looks like there's one, two, three strikes. This F is extra thick. Looks like there might be a couple of strikes on that. When you move over to States, there's a little bit of a, a dimple here. It looks like there's two S's on top of each other, maybe three. Look at that E. Look at that T. That A is crazy. This T gets even more crazier. Looks like there's several strikes and it's been in circulation for a while. When we get to United, same thing. Looks very odd. But I always like to rotate my coins around when they look funny. And here's what's really something to think about. When I get to this T and S right here, rotating it, that to me looks like there's clearly a double serif on that T and on that S. And when you look at it, if it was machine doubling, it'd be flat and smooth out. It's offset. So this coin, man, I don't know. I need to do a little research, but if I were to take a guess on it, it looks like it might be a double or a triple struck planchet. I could be wrong. Wanted to hear your guys' thoughts on this one. What do you think? Am I seeing things? Is it just really bad die deterioration doubling? Cool find, got my heart going, and I knew I saw a lot of machine doubling on it as well, or die deterioration doubling. It's just something I wanted to point out. Still a really cool find nonetheless. Let me know what you guys think about that. Do you think it has value? Or it's just more of a conversation piece from a mint using a die that was about to die, no pun intended. Well, kind of. All right, let's get back to the hunt. Roll 26. 1940 nickel out of Philly. Roll 37. We're going to find a 1940 nickel again. And I think this one's San Francisco. Yep, San Francisco. Very next roll. Roll number 38. Got another 40s nickel. And this one's a 1947 out of Denver. Roll 42. Going to have another 40s nickel. And it's our first 1941 out of Philly. So we finished hunting that chase box of nickels and it was a pretty good one. We found silver. We got an 83 Denver minted nickel with some serious dye deterioration doubling. So that's always pretty cool to find as well. We did get a semi-key date, 1955 out of Philadelphia, less than 8 million minted. We ended up with 12 in the 50s, six in the 40s, not including the silver, as well as a Commonwealth of the Bahamas coin, 1998, no 2009s. Crazy. Crazy. We'll plug this into the stat sheet. I don't think it beat Wells Fargo, but it did pretty well. And now it's up to B of A to make a stand and catch up some points. Let me get into this box and we'll bring in when I find something worth showing. So we're on roll 21 and I have not filmed any of the finds because they've all been 50s. We found a lot of 59, 58, 57, 56, and even a 53. So a lot of later Jeffersons, but nothing in the 40s. So I don't know if this is just someone's dump coins of the older year Jeffersons that they didn't want or what. So I was kind of thinking, man, am I going to find any oldies? But I bring in because sure enough, we did find one. A 1939. Hoping for a D or an S to make it a key date. But if not, we'll be checking for a DDR. There is doubling on the reverse of these if you can get so lucky. This one does not have a mint mark, so it is not a key date. But let's see if it has any doubling. So unfortunately, no doubling on this one. It's pretty pronounced on the word Monticello and on the word five cents, or the words five cents, I should say. So this is not gonna be a DDR or a key date, but still, i always take a 1939 Jefferson in any box. Roll 25, we're finally gonna get our first nickel from the 40s. It is a 1947. Well, this is crazy, guys. Roll number 28, 
I had a Silver Ender in the first box, my second ever, a Buffalo Ender in the second box of this three box hunt, and now I just grabbed this roll out, roll 28, and I had to check the date because it looked funny on the front, and sure enough, that's a 1944 Silver Ward Nickel Ender. We now have three Enders in three different boxes. Let's see if it's got any friends. War Nickel Ender, 1944, out of Philadelphia. So let me get back to the hunt and see if we find anything else. Roll number 44, continuing to stack up the 50s, but we did find another 40s nickel here, and it is a 1941 out of Philly. Okay, we finished on that box of B of A nickels. We end up with 15 from the 50s, so quite a bit of finds there. Only two from the 40s, other than the 44 Philadelphia minted war nickel. Not in the greatest of shape, but I'll take it. We also found a 39 Philadelphia, no DDR, and a 2009, only one in the box, and it was from Denver, of course. A lot of finds, but not a lot of early finds still. A 39 and a war nickel in the box. B of A did itself proud this time. I don't know if it's enough to win. We'll have to plug these into the stat sheet to see which bank won this round. Let me go ahead and do that right now for you. Nickel Bank Box Battle Series Round 5 is complete. Wells Fargo took the round at 39 and a half points. Chase right there, chasing them at 39 points. And B of A held its own this time at 27 and a half. Not a terrible box, just couldn't uh, beat those other two banks. At the end of the day, we're now halfway through the 10 round series. Wells Fargo's got a pretty comfortable lead. 43-8 over 37-6 Chase and 29-5 B of A. All it takes is an epic box or two from a bank, though, and anyone can win this. We're only halfway through. I'll tell you, I was happy getting two Buffalo Nickels in the first Wells Fargo box and then finding a silver in the subsequent next two bank boxes. We ended up with four good Nickels overall of my top three finds that you want to find in a bank box in those three boxes. So I hope the average is a little bit. I had a lot of fun, and hopefully you did too. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting. And thanks for watching.